Alright boys and girls, we're going to be making a cubist portrait in the style of Pablo Picasso. It's very important when you're making this drawing that you make sure that you draw big on the paper. You want to draw big on the paper because we're going to be using oil pastel to color these in next week. And if you have a very small drawing, uh, it's very hard to color in with oil pastel because oil pastels are very thick and they don't like to go in small little areas. So, alright, remember, you watch me draw until you hear, and it's your turn to draw. If you hear this, Here we go again. you need to look back up at the screen, and if you are being very cooperative, hopefully you'll get to hear this. Yeah, Alright, we're going to start towards the top part of your paper, and we're just going to focus on drawing the head. We're not going to draw the body like you saw in a lot of the cubist portraits that I showed you at the beginning of class. We're just going to draw the head to make things a little bit easier. Alright, we're going to start with a big curve for the top of the head, this part. Next step. On the side of the head, we're going to put a big nose. So Picasso liked to make in his cubist portraits some of the features are very exaggerated. That means that he drew them big and he did it on purpose. So the nose is definitely one of them. And then on the other side, we're gonna put an ear. Take your time. If you make a mistake, uh, you know, erase it and fix it. Next step, we're gonna draw the mouth next. So we're gonna come down and draw the lips and the chin. And then we're going to curve under and over to draw the jawline and connect all the way to the bottom of the ear right there. Next up, we're going to draw the neck. So just two lines coming down the neck and then add shoulders, not soldiers. Shoulders. Shoulders. Soldiers are the ones that go out into the world and fight for freedom. Shoulders are what your head is resting on, your head and your neck. Okay, next step. We're going to start to build the part, rest of the face now, the inside part of the face. So the eyes that I'm going to draw are going to be both different. They're going to be uh, one eye, because Picasso in his cubist portraits tried to show more than one side of the face. Usually he shows at least two sides. So we're going to draw one eye that looks like it's looking straight ahead at us. And then we're going to draw another eye that's like from the side like this. Like this. Because Picasso often would draw one eye looking from the front and one eye looking from the side. So the front eye is pretty easy. You just draw that almond shape. And then you put in iris, that's the big circle, and pupil, that's the small circle. I'm gonna get fancy, you can do some eyelashes here. And then the second eye is gonna be kind of like a cone shape. It's gonna be pointy at one end, and on the other end it's gonna be round. And then Picasso would usually do eyelashes here. So there's our front facing eye. Draw those eyes. Okay, next step. We're going to do the mouth now. This is always like the weirdest part of the drawing to me. So we'll draw the lips. And then I always like to include some teeth. They're fun to draw and they're fun to color. Maybe this cubist portrait is of someone who's very angry. I always like to add some lines here and there. Forehead lines, nose lines, chin lines. the folds of the skin in the ear. I put some hair coming out of his ear. Is that weird? Is that weird drawing hair coming out of his ear? Some people have hair growing out of his ear. 
This drawing's pretty weird anyway, so why not? Okay, now, nostrils. You can draw hair coming out of those two if you want. And add some details. Okay, before we do the hair, let's just take a look here for a moment at some examples. If you want your Cubis portrait to have girl-like hair, you want to draw the hair going long. If you want the Cubis portrait to have boy-like hair, you want it to go very short. So here's a finished drawing, and then we're going to talk about the shading. So I've got lots of short hair up here because I have short hair. I didn't bother to draw my beard because it would cover up a lot of my drawing. Let's talk about the shading. So the shading is there for you, for an artist, to show depth on the face. So right now our drawing is very flat. So Picasso would use shading on his cubist portraits to make them look even stranger. So we would put shading, and we usually see shading around the eyes. For instance, you're looking at my eyes right now. I have some shadows around my eyes because my eyes are inside my face. They're kind of sunken in because of the nature of the anatomy of our head, the skull, the eye sits in the sockets that go in, and the brow comes out, it sticks out, it takes all the light. So the light is coming down, it's hitting the top of my head, and then my brow is casting a shadow into my eye sockets. You might have shadows around your nose, around the creases of your nose, underneath your lips. If you have very high cheekbones, sometimes you get a shadow right under here, and right under here. You might have shadows around your ear. You can even see shadows around the folds of my forehead line. So, when you're drawing, you want to reflect that. You take your pencil and just kind of really softly, just kind of shade. You don't want it to go too dark. You can always go darker. You shade in areas that you know are dark, like the nostrils, some shadows around the nose. And you keep going until you have a nice shadow on your design. Now, it's also important to do the shading because when we go to add color with oil pastel to this, this graphite here from our pencil lead will mix with our color and will give us some nice shadow colors too. All right, finish up your shading and then it's gonna be time to turn your drawings in.